أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وخاتم النبيين سيدنا ونبينا وشفيع ذنوبنا وطبيب قلوبنا بالقاسم محمد على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الغر الميامين المعصومين من يومنا هذا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وكتابه المتين وهو أصدق القائلين وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل ما يعبأ بكم ربي لولا دعاءكم سلوات Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he created this universe out of his infinite wisdom he created this universe in such a manner that he chose to perform functions in this universe through certain principles. There are certain principles that govern the function of this universe. Those unchangeable principles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are called the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the sunans the sunnats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can give them different names. Some of the laws of nature, they are part of the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is how this universe functions through those principles. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He keeps those principles charged. It is not that He designed those principles and there is no longer a need for a God to look after the universe. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who keeps those principles intact and functioning. For without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing will exist. Everything will cease to exist. The principles of nature, the rules of nature are part of the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are other sunnas, other principles that govern the functioning of this universe. There are certain sunnas that relate to nations. There are other sunnas that relate to how things will be get, will be done, will function in this universe. For example, one of the most important sunnas regarding nations and communities is the one mentioned in this verse of the Holy Quran which says A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem Inna Allaha la yughayyiru ma biqawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi'anfusihim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change the state of a nation until they change themselves This is a sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is not going to change the affairs of a nation unless they themselves take steps to change it. Now if a person makes a dua, if a nation collectively supplicates to Allah to change their affairs, and this dua, dua itself being a principle through which Allah governs this universe, if this comes in conflict with another principle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this dua is not going to get accepted. This dua is not going to go, get accepted because Allah 
has announced that he is not going to change the state of an ummah, of a nation, in the Allah la yughayyiru. Ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfuthayim. Unless they change themselves. And a lot of nations that were doomed after the Prophet told them that there is going to be an adab collectively, the nation were doomed except for one nation who took that step to collectively change themselves. And only one nation among all the nations mentioned in the Holy Quran, where Allah says, why is there not a nation, a qariya, a city, whose iman benefited them? And that nation is the nation of Prophet Yunus When the Prophet gave them the warning of Allah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there was an abid in that city who encouraged the Prophet to curse that nation and seek Allah's azab for that nation, whereas there was an alim in that city who encouraged the Prophet of Allah to give them more time to do tabliq to them, to invite them again till a point came that Prophet Yunus warned them about the coming of an azab and he left and the nation when they saw the signs of that azab they came to that alim and they repented and the alim took them to the desert and they repented. They separated the males from the females and the children from the mothers to create that state in which dua is going to be accepted. The more desperate you become, the more easily your dua is going to be accepted. So they created that state of desperation where the animals were separated the mothers were separated from their children. Imagine if everybody is separate and, and the cries of the children and the adults, they all repented sincerely. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala switched off the azab that was about to come to them because of their dua. Because they were ready and they changed themselves. And this also shows the merit of an alim over an abid. It was through the advice of an alim that they were able to save themselves. The Prophet had left, had left that nation. See, and with your ilm, you can do what you might not be able to do with your wealth. So the merit of ilm, of knowledge over wealth is, wealth is already established in our traditions. And similarly, the merit of an alim is also established over that of an abid. And that is why we find that the sleep of an alim is better than the vigil of an abid. We find that in our traditions. Another sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that governs, that prevails over this universe is that of trial and tribulation which was the topic of our discussion last year the holy quran says a'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim ahasiba an-nas an yutraku an yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun do the people think that they will be left that they have said we have believed while they have not been tested this is not going to happen the principle of azmaish is there every one of us as an individual and as a nation have to go through this principle this sunnah of azmaish whether you are blessed with a ni'mat of allah a blessing of allah or you're deprived a blessing of allah both are azmaish and trial for you if you pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you with a child or with the wealth or with the spouse, you're actually asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to test you through a child, to test you through wealth and through a spouse. It is not that those who are poor are under test. 
if you have been blessed with the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are again under test. Those who are blessed with the acceptance of du'as, that is not a sign that Allah is razi and pleased with them. In the very same manner, those who are blessed with blessings, with worldly blessings, does not mean that Allah is pleased with you. And those who do not have those worldly blessings, Allah is upset at them. No, it does not mean that. All it means is that you are being tested differently and those are tested differently. It is what you do with these blessings and how you engage with those blessings that will reveal whether Allah is pleased with you or displeased with you. So this sunnah of azmaish is there. There are some who pray to Allah and Allah accepts their prayers immediately. It does not mean that Allah is pleased with you. There are traditions which say that when those who sin to Allah and are not repentful, when they call Allah, Allah tells the angels, accept his or her prayers, for I do not like their voice. And there are people, when a mu'min or a mu'mina prays to God, Allah tells the angels, accept his prayers, but delay the fulfillment of that prayer. I want to listen to them more and more. It is the connection that matters. The more you pray, the more your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthens. And that is what Allah wants. This is the inherent benefit of dua, that we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, any dua that contradicts with this sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will again not be accepted. If a person prays to Allah, Mujhe kisi azmaish mein mubtala na karna. Allah, do not put me in any test. This prayer is not going to be accepted because this goes against the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not going to be accepted. We are all going to go through gham in this world, even the dua that is very common and we all recite it without paying attention to it. Hame koi gham na dena sawaye? Hussain. One of the scholars pointed out a beautiful thing. He said, if, if this is a dua you are making, then again, this is going against the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there will, you will be tested with loss of wealth and health and children and spouses and family members and fruit and, and what else. The only way for this dua to be fulfilled is that you would be the next person to leave this world. Only then you will not see any gham except Ghamir Hussain. Because then you, what you are saying that I do not want to see the loss of any of my beloved members. So if that is what that dua means, unless this dua is supposed to mean that make me disconnected with all of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then that, 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 that is a different story. Then that is something different. But if it means that do not give me the, the gham, the grief of the loss of my loved ones, then what you're asking for is that let me be the next one to leave this world. So any dua in one of the traditions we have that Amirul Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib He was reciting this dua, he said Allahumma la tahwijni ila ahadim min khalqik Again, this is a dua that we also make. Oh Allah, do not make me muhtaj. Mujhe apni makhluk me se kisi ka muhtaj na karna. We make this prayers. Do not make me dependent on any one of your creation. The Holy Prophet said to him, do not make this dua. For there is no one in this world who is not in need of someone else. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this universe. We are all in need of each other. So don't make this dua. If you want to make a dua, the Imam asked, how should I make this dua? He said, pray to Allah, Allahumma la tahwijni ila shirari khalqik. Oh Allah, do not make me dependent and in need of the most wicked of your creation. 
शरीर लोगों का मोहताज ना बनाना दिस इज द दुआ यू नीड टू मेक बिकॉज द दुआ दैट मुझे किसी का मोहताज ना बनाना दैट इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी फुलफिल्ड सिमिलरली मुझे आजमाइश में मुबतला ना करना वन समी वॉज मेकिंग दिस दुआ इन नाहजुलबलागा वी हैव अमीर उलमोमिनसलासलाम turns to him and said don't make this dua because you will be tested then he said what dua should i make he said make this dua that o bar ilaha mujhe gumrah kun fitno mein mubtala na karna do not test me with a trial that will lead me astray because you will be tested so these are sunnas of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are in place another sunna of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he does not forgive the kufars he does not forgive those who have rejected allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger this is another sunna of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he mentions he states that clearly in the holy quran when allah says to the holy prophet the whether you do istighfar for them or you do not it doesn't matter in tastaghfir lahum 70 marrah even if you seek forgiveness for them 70 times falan yaghfir allah lahum allah is not going to forgive them allah is not going to forgive them and the next part of the verse mentions the reason dhalika it is because they rejected allah and his messenger even if the holy prophet prays for them it is not going to get accepted because that conflicts with the sunna of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it does not matter who prays another incident that you must have come across is that of the story of prophet nuh alayhi salatu was salam when his son refused to board the ship and the prophet advised him do not be with those who are the kufars and he said i'm going to climb up the the mountain and allah and i i will be saved and when the wave oh, separated the two and he was about to drown or he was almost drowned the holy prophet turned to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because allah had given him a promise that he is going to save the ahl of nuh alayhi salam and prophet nuh had supposed that his son is among his ahl the holy quran says na da nuhun rabba nu prayed called his rabb his lord faqala rabbi oh my lord in nabni min ahli truly my son is from my ahl is from my family when na wa'daka al-haq and verily your promise is true you promise you're going to save my child my ahl wa anta ahkamul wa anta ahkamul hakimin and you're the best of the judges the response came ya nu in hu laysa min ahlik he's not from your ahl he said in nabni my son is from my ahl allah did not negate him being the son allah said laysa min ahlik he is not from your ahl he is your son but not from your ahl being related to the prophet of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not save anyone from the hell fire if we do not belong to the ahl of the prophet be whether you are the son the daughter the father the brother the mother and the same goes with spouses that goes against the sunnah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala innahu laysa min ahlik innahu amalun ghairu sahli his actions are not sahli fala tas'alni ma laysa laka bihi ilm do not ask me what do you what you do not know you are asking me to do to go against the sunnah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so these are sunnahs of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dua is not a tool 
to change the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The message I wanted to give today is that dua is not a tool to change the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has appointed certain sunnahs and one of those sunnahs that he is not going to accept the dua of certain, he's not going to accept certain duas made by certain people. And those duas, why? Because those duas go against some of the sunnahs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One such sunnah is that risk does not come to you unless you do not try. You do not make an effort. So if someone wants to replace the door of risk, replace action and effort with dua, that is not going to work. You cannot make risk to come to you without making sa'i, without making effort. That is a sunnah of the Prophet. There's a story that a person decided to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not make any effort. He said, Allah is razik and the risk is going to come to me. So he, was, he sat in his room and he started to read the Quran and, and, and uh, do ibadat. And by the way, there is a tradition where, the imam, where a person comes to the imam and says, what do you say about this person who is sitting in his room and he's worshipping and he's reading the Quran and he's doing, he's saying, I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast and I'm going to do all of these ibadats and my risk will come to me. The imam said, this is one of those places where his du'as will not going, is not going to be accepted. His risk is not going to come to him. So this person stood, was sitting in, in the room and hoping the risk to come. Unfortunately, someone was distributing the tabarruk and he kept on giving tabarruk to everybody. And then he opened the door and he saw this person busy. And so he decided not to disturb him. And so he left. So he missed his, his lunch. At night, the same thing happened. And again, a person came to distribute tabarruk. And he got, gave tabarruk to everybody. Again, he entered the room and he saw this person sitting on his prayer mat. And he again decided not to disturb him. And he was about to leave when that person said, <clears throat> And he gave them the tabarruk. So the next day he came to his studio, his other colleagues and he said, so how did you find the promise of Allah? He said, well, the promise of Allah that risk will come to you is true, but you have to do something. You have to, you have to do something. It is not going to come without doing anything. Allah decides you have to make your effort. Allah decides how that is going to come. The sunnah of amal, of action for risk to come. The tradition goes along these lines that there are five group of people whose du'as, these du'as that are mentioned will not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, a person who is not happy with this marriage, he has the means to separate and the wealth to do so. Yet he prays to Allah to save himself, to provide comfort in his life, to save him from his spouse, but does not use the key of divorce that Allah has given in his own hands. Allah says, I'm not going to accept his prayers. Another person who sits in his house and prays for risk, without making any effort, Allah says, I'm not going to accept the prayer of this person. Another person whose du'as are not going to be accepted is a person who has taken a loan and did not take any evidence, any witnesses over it, neither is there any documentation available, and that person is not returning the loan and is praying to Allah, to make arrangements for that person to return the loan. Allah will say, I told you to document. 
to take witnesses. You choose not to do that. I am not going to fulfill your prom your your Torah today. And there are other du'as as well. The story I want to connect with all of this is that we have mentioned in the in the previous days that there are three important ways or keys to unlock the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the first and foremost is realization of your need towards Allah, your faqr, your existential poverty towards Allah. Wherever there is thirst, there will be water. Wherever there is a teacher, there will be a student. They search for each other. There is reciprocal attraction between the needy and the needless. The second is that of action and dua. Of action and the third is that of dua. They all work together. And there is one and the more desperate you become in your need, the more desperate you seek what you need. And the more desperate you seek what you need, the more tawajjo and the more you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your dua. They're all related and we need to realize this. And there is one great event in history where all these three come together in a single event. The need, action, and dua. And all of them in its peak, at its peak. And as a result, a miracle happens. And this is true for all. You don't have to be a prophet or an imam to do that. A miracle takes place. And that is the story of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam Salu ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad When he leaves his family in a deserted, in a desolate desert a place which according to the Quran is not capable of vegetation when Allah commanded him to leave his wife Hajira salam, and his son Ismail who is only a child who was blessed to Ibrahim salam, in his late 90s imagine you get a blessing from Allah at the age of 90 or more and Allah asks you to leave your family alone in a desert with no vegetation, not even capable of vegetation, and no water, with limited provisions. Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, does that and prays to Allah, Rabbana, inni askantu min zurriyati, O Allah, I have left my zurriyah, my progeny, bivadin ghayri zi dharain, in a valley that is not capable of vegetation in the Baytik al-Muharram near your holy house Rabbana let yuqeebu salah so that they can pray they can establish prayers Faj'al af'idatam minan nas turn the hearts of the people towards them Tahvi ilayhim warzukhum minal thamarat la'allahum yashkurun and bless them with fruits so that they can be thankful Prophet Ibrahim leaves his family alone, relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the message we get from Ibrahim But then what happens after that? Lady Hajira, the mother of all the Mu'mineens and all the Muslims, the mother of the grand, great, great grandmother of the Holy Prophet, she's all alone with limited provisions and when water is over and when there is no more water and the child begins to cry asking for water this is the faqr and the need that the child is expressing towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
And this is again at its peak, because if an adult is thirsty, the nuzul of the rahmah, the descending of rahmat is not as severe as the descending of rahmah when a child is thirsty. When a baby is thirsty, and when he cries, that unlocks a door of mercy. Imagine what went through the heart of Bibi Hajara when her child is crying. She starts to unlock another door of mercy through action. She starts to run between Safa and Marwa. That is the second door, second key through which the mercy of Allah is going to be unlocked. Sa'i. She runs to Safa looking for water. She does not find water. She does not lose hope. She runs towards Marwa, a hill top, looking around if she can find a pond of, pond of water or a person with some water. There is no one there. There is no water. But that does not stop her. The child continues to cry. The child becomes more and more desperate. And that key of oh, unlocking the, the mercy of Allah becomes more and more severe. And if it, the, it was the father of this child, I wonder if he would have the same feelings of desperation that a mother would have for a child. So she keeps running between Safa and Marwa. Safa and Marwa. She keeps running. She does not give up. If she was looking for material causes, running between Safa and Marwa once or twice would have been enough. There is nothing there, and then you checked at Marwa and there's nothing there. But she did not stop. She kept on running. Why is she continuing to run in search of water? Because she knows that the key to unlocking the door of Allah's mercy is sa'i, is action. She has to do her part. If she, had, if she was looking at material causes only, then there was no need to run over and over again. Every time she would run towards Safa and Marwa, she was hoping that her action would unlock the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this unlocking means that Allah would create the means for water to come. Had she relied only on material causes, it would have ended. And the third key that did what was needed was her disconnection, her disconnecting herself from everything other than Allah and turning completely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She had her complete reliance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is why she kept on running between Safa and Marwa, between a state of hope and fear, fearing for her child and hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bless her with what she needs. All of these three parameters, poverty, need, and action, and inqita ilallah, all came together and suddenly water begins to gush from beneath Hazrat Ismail's feet. This miracle happens. Allah did not give her water where she was looking for water. Allah gave water where the thirsty was. Allah created water where the thirsty was. And also in order to show that it is I who will create the means where I want. If it were you, O Hajra, who created, who brought this water out, it would have been where you were looking for it. Lekin Allah Ta'ala ne paani ko janabe Ismail al-Islam ke kadmo mein rakha. This event in which all of these three factors came together in its perfection. And that's why I said if it was other than anyone other than Lady Hajira, the, a male person would not have had that feeling towards a child that a female has, a mother has. All of these three factors coming together 
and the inqita and the turning of Lady Hajra towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was at such a level that looking at that sight, even the angels in the skies begin to weep with her. And as a result, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely unlocked and water began to come, come out from beneath the feet of Hazrat Ismail. And Allah liked this event so much so much that he made this a sunnah for all those who go and perform hajj. That they have to follow and replicate this running of hers between hope and fear. To remind everyone that this is the ultimate purpose of your creation. To connect yourself, to disconnect yourself from everything other than Allah and to connect solely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that has to be done by fulfilling the prerequisites. Action has to be there. The feeling and realization of hunger has to be there. I'd like to turn to the angels and ask them, oh angels, when Lady Hajra was running between Safa and Marwa, and Ismail was thirsty and he was crying. And she had completely disconnected herself from any material, all material means and turned towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You begin to cry with her. And as a result, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resulted in water from gushing out from between Hazrat Ismail's feet. The thirst of Asghar on the day of Ashur was not less or little, any little than the thirst of Ismail in Mecca. The effort, the sa'i that Lady Hajra had done cannot be compared with the effort Imam Hussain al-Islam was doing. The inqita, the disconnected Lady Hajra had towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It cannot be compared with the disconnect to the material blessings and the connection that Imam Hussein had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do we not see then streams flowing out of Karbala when Imam Hussein wasalam, had taken the six months baby on his hands? Yahan par bhi wo tino cheeze maujood hain. The fakr is there. Ali Asghar was in a state. The tradition say that he was in a state just like a fish has come out of water. And when a fish is out of water, it opens the mouth and closes the mouth. Open. This, is, this, this was the state of Ali Asghar. He could not even cry anymore. This was the state. Or in Qita Imam Hussain ka Allah ki taraf اس شدت کے ساتھ تھا کہ جو امتحان دیا ہے میرے مولا نے وہ کوئی دوسرا نہیں دے سکتا تھا میں کہوں گا کہ زمزم جناب اسماعیل کے ذیلے ضرور نکلا لیکن خدا مسلحت کے تحت دعاؤں کو پورا کرتا ہے وہاں پر مسلحت یہ تھی کہ اسماعیل کی جان بچ جائے زمزم جاری ہو گیا یا مسلحت یہ تھی کہ اصغر کی جان چلی جائے اصغر شہید ہو جائے اور اس کے نتیجے میں مومنین کے دلوں میں زمزم پھوٹ پڑے مومنین کے دلوں میں ایسا زمزم پھوٹا ہے کہ اب تا قیامت وہ زمزم جاری ہے اِنَّا لِقَتْلِ الْحُسَيْنِ حَرَارَةً فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ لَن تَبْرُدَ عَبَدًا یقی ویرلی in the sacrifice of Imam Hussain a warmth has been created in the hearts of the مومنین that will never go light جو کبھی بھی اب خاموش نہیں ہوگی یہ حسین اور حسین والوں کی قربانی ہے that has resulted in that warm and heat of the in the hearts of the مومنین that Till the day of judgment, this warmth will be there and will be felt. On the day of Ashur, when our Imam was left all alone by himself, 
And he said the statement, Hal min bin an Is there anyone who is willing to defend the family of the holy household? There was sound and there was cries. Start cries started to come from the camps. Imam Hussain wasalam, returned to the camps. He said, I just said farewell to you. I just said goodbye to you. What has happened? They said, when you say, ya, oh Imam, when you offer your last call, when you say, Hal min bin an Rasulillah, Al Yasr begins to cry. He becomes desperate. Ali, Imam Hussain said, give him to me. Let me see if I can make arrangements for what and then he took Ali Asghar in the battlefield. When he was taking Ali Asghar in the battlefield, do you think he felt that anyone from the Ashqiya will give water? No. No, it did, did not. He had full and he knew very well that they are not going to give a drop of water. But he had to do the itmam of hujjah. He had to fulfill his duty. He takes Ali Asghar in front of the Ashqiya and he said, In lam tarhamuni, farhamu hadat tifl. If you have no mercy on me, if you do not show any mercy on me, at least have some mercy on this baby. Fasku sharbatam mimma. Give him a drop of water give him a drop of how much water does a baby need a few drops of water but they did not they did not and Hurmala was asked to stop the speech of Imam Hussain salam. Umar Saad turned to Himmila and said Iqta kalam al Hussain stop the speech of Hussain and Hurmala confused he said what should I do who should I aim should I aim for Hussain or should I aim for Ali Asghar Umar Saad said do not do you not see the song soft hulk do you know, see the soft neck of Ali Asghar aim for the head neck of Ali Asghar Hurmala who was a brave and who was a very specialist in arrow firing he fired an arrow an arrow that was used to kill the wild beasts that was used and it was fired towards Imam towards Imam Hussein aiming at the baby in the hands of Imam Hussein salatu wassalam. Imam Hussein had to give this test and if his hands were shivered the arrow would miss its target Imam Hussein was at such peace that he waited for the arrow to pierce the neck of, of Ali Asghar. Ali Asghar is slaughtered in the hands of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wassalam. And it is easy for Imam Hussain for he said Havana alayya wallah. This is easy for me because it is happening before your eyes. Wallah you are witnessing all of this. And then he had to take the Janaza of Ali Asghar back to the camps. Ali Asghar ka janaza bhi wapas lekar jana hai. Roze Ashur Imam ne pohat se janaze uthaye honge. Lekin koi bhi janaza itna bhari nahi tha. Jitna bhari Ali Asghar ka janaza lag raha tha. Imam kuch qadam chalte te. Ruk jate te. Inna lillahi. Wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Palatte hai ruk jate. जब हुमर मल्ला से पूछा गया क्या तुझे रोज़े आशुर इमाम हुसैन पर रहम न आया कहाँ एक वक्त रहम आया था कहाँ मैंने करबला में तीन तीर चलाए थे एक अली अकबर के सीने की तरफ एक हुसैन की पेशानी की तरफ और तीसरा तीर अली असगर के गले की तरफ चलाया था कहाँ मैं करबला में हुसैन पर उस वक्त रोया था जब हुसैन के हाथों में अली असगर का जनाजा था खेमे की तरफ चलते थे पलट जाते थे we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept what was said and what was heard and to forgive our sins and to re and to hasten the reappearance of our twelfth Imam for in his reappearance is the solution to all of our problems. Inshallah. Matame Hussein.
distance or stand, I would offer my two kids again. Oh, for your noble resistance or stand, I would offer my two kids again. But for your trampled and shrouded body, but for your trampled and shrouded body, I will stand under the sun and sob. Oh, Merubab, oh, Merubab, oh, Our Lady, oh, Merubab, oh, Merubab, oh, Merubab, oh, Our Lady, oh, Merubab, oh, Merubab. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.